You can't always get what you want. However, however, America gets what it deserves Sunday night in prime time, three plus hours of Bears football. And when you really, 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 truly think about it, yeah, America does deserve every single bit of it, don't they? Indeed, they do. But you know what? We are here and millions upon millions of people will proactively choose to suffer through this on Sunday night. As a result, we should feel absolutely zero sympathy for them because they chose this pain. But who knows? Maybe we'll have an interesting contest on Sunday because you know the Chargers will do their best to try and Chargers it up. That's for damn sure. But as we look at this matchup on Sunday night, start off with the Bears. It's Tyson Bajan season, at least for now. He started last week against the Raiders and was a success. He was adequate in his first career NFL start. You'll notice I'm not going and doing backflips and saying he was great or he was awesome. No, he was adequate. Like that is a fair, reasonable description of his first career NFL start. Also, the Bears defense contained a crappy Raiders offense and they were able to squeak out the 30 to 12 win. So now you've got Chicago sitting at two and five and while they're not going anywhere, they are a little bit more interesting at the moment coming into this game since they just are coming off of a win. You've got Tyson Bajant is gonna make his second straight start because Justin Fields has already been ruled out with the thumb injury. He's got another chance to show what he can do. And let's be very clear, I've already went on record earlier this week and said, for a variety of different reasons, in my opinion, Tyson Bajan should be QB1 for the Bears the rest of the season. To those that still want to cling to and hold on to hope that Justin Fields is the guy, we've crossed that bridge. It's done. You need to get past it, get over it, and move the hell on. It's just that simple. Bajit, though, could make things pretty interesting for the Bears coaching staff and general manager Ryan Poles. If he goes out there and he wins his second start, now he'll be 2-0 and as a starter, and you're going to say, well, he did what a backup quarterback should do. He did enough to not cost the team the game and help them win a couple of games. Well, yeah, but why couldn't the starter, the anointed one, Justin Fields, do the same fucking thing? And if you're a coaching staff that's desperate for victories, desperate to potentially save your job, why the hell would you go back to Justin Fields? That's a fair question. It actually is. The Bears will get some help back on offense because they know they're going to lean on the running game like they did last week with Deontay Foreman. Now they'll get Roshan Johnson back into the fold, so that's going to help. Not even in just talking about the running game, but also in pass protection, too, for the young quarterback. Uh, and this is a critical stretch of the schedule for the Bears. It's a stretch of four road games in their next five before their bye week. Although you could argue, certainly, that this is not going to be much of a road game since it's in Los Angeles and we're talking about the Chargers. Like, there's going to be certainly more Bears fans there than Chargers fans. Undoubtedly so, right? Meanwhile, for the Chargers... This feels like a Chargers season, doesn't it? It's pretty close to the worst case scenario start for them to this season. They're sitting at two and four right now. Three losses behind the Chiefs in the AFC West. They're not making up that gap. The Chiefs are very unlikely to lose four game, more than four games at this point. And it's incredibly unlikely the Chargers would win out the rest of the way. You've got to be realistic here. They're coming off of losses in back-to-back -back weeks against the Cowboys and the Chiefs. You know, two and four, not where they would want to be. And what's even more concerning is their offense has only scored 17 points in back-to-back -back games against the Cowboys and against the Chiefs. So they faced some decent defenses, and the offense really didn't show up uh, in both of those games. Even more interesting, more worrisome if you're a Chargers fan is you have to look at that defense and you say, what exactly does Brandon Staley do around here? The Chargers defense is 25th in points allowed, 31st in total yards allowed, dead butt naked last in total passing yards allowed. Like what, what does Brandon Staley do other than find ways to mismanage game scenarios and fuck games up? Like what does he do at this point? Oh, 
looking at his resume. Ah, yes, there it is. There is certainly the stench of Bears football, and you can see it evident in so many ways that he approaches things. Now, for the Chargers, this could be a revenge game for Khalil Mack. You know, he spent four seasons in Chicago, got traded away before the 2022 season. This could be one, like, he could be looking his chops coming into this matchup a little bit. Um, so it would be curious to see, like, if this ends up being a revenge game for him. The betting odds right now have the Chargers as eight and a half point favorites. And I'm sorry, this is not Bears homerism because we know that really doesn't fucking matter to me. But eight and a half point spread? Have you watched this Chargers team this year? I mean, seriously. Oh, the Bears stink. But right now, so do the Chargers. And this feels like way too much money movement on the Chargers. It really does. Because the home field advantage is non-existent. Certainly, they have the advantage at quarterback. But head coach, no. Defensively, maybe they have a bit of an edge, but it's not much. And you would even question at this point how much of an edge that is. The, the Bears you know, strength on defense arguably is their secondary, especially if everybody's healthy. And the Chargers strength is in the passing game at the receiver position. Eight and a, I could understand the Chargers being three to five point favorites here, but eight and a half feels a bit extreme. Also that over under a 46 and a half, you know, that feels like it's really at the high end. It really does. Of course, when I make my prediction, I will counteract what I just said there. Um, when you talk about keys to victory, though, for the Bears, offensively first, pass first, attack the middle of the field with DJ Moore and Cole Komet. That's what you have to do, especially because Bajan is better at working the middle of the field than Justin Fields is. That's the reality. Additionally, teams would be preparing for the Bears to primarily work behind the line of scrimmage of the passing game outside. They're not going to be looking a lot over the middle. They're not going to be stretching their defenses to stop the passing game over the middle. So you got to attack that. Get DJ Moore on some slats, on slants, on crossing patterns, on posts. You know, work Cole Komet over the middle. The Chiefs just had a huge game with Travis Kelsey last Sunday. Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, you think, well, Cole Komet's going to put up Kelsey numbers? Absolutely fucking not. But if the Chargers have shown you that they struggled to defend tight ends, then you should go after that. Um, the Bears also need to avoid second and 10 and third and seven plus yard situations on offense. And that means throwing a little bit more on first down, not just going, oh, put him up, put him up. I'm the offensive coordinator. I got courage. I got courage. Halfback dive. Halfback dive. Screen pass. Punt. <laughs> so, you got to get out of those third and longs, especially with a young quarterback. And then defensively, they got to get some pressure on Justin Herbert. They've actually got to get home. Not just pressure, but they got to get a couple of sacks. This is not a good pass rush team, talking about the Bears. They need to get some pressure on Herbert because if they let him sit there relatively comfortable and pick him apart, that's exactly what he's going to do. For the Chargers, attack the middle of the Bears' coverage. They're soft there. They're weak there. You've got Bears fans trying to pretend like Edmonds and Edwards have been great in coverage. They have not. This team stinks over the middle defensively. Attack the middle of their defense. And then for the Chargers defensively, attack the left side of the offensive line. You're going to have Larry Borum and Cody White here there because Braxton Jones is still out. Nate Davis is still out, which means Tevin Jenkins has flipped over to right guard. you got to attack that left side. Try to get it to cave in. Try to get the Bears to overcompensate there. I would say in general, attack the edges. Attack the young tackles and bore them in right. Especially right with the shoulder injury, even if he's healthy enough to play. You could see it was impacting him last week. It would stand to reason he's not 100% still. Go after the edges. Thinking about this game overall, you know, it is one of those things, like, this is one of these spots 
that you can't just automatically assume the Chargers would win because it's the Bears in prime time and they typically stink in prime time and the Chargers are supposed to be better. Well, they're not much better right now. Um, that said, I do like the Chargers in this matchup 27 to 20. So I actually think they will get over the over under. Um, but like I said, win or lose, if Tyson Bajan has another solid start, things will get real interesting for Chicago if they choose to let it be.